We're joined at this time by Cincinnati Associate Head Coach Larry Davis, along with student athletes Troy Copain and Farad Cobb. We'll ask Coach Davis to start with an opening statement, then we'll take questions first for the student athletes. Well, obviously, uh, unbelievable job by our guys of not giving in, not quitting, and doing what the Bearcats stand for, which is fight to the end, stay together, which they did as a group. And I want to give Purdue credit. Those guys played their hearts out, and it was a heck of a basketball game, and we were fortunate to come out on top at the end. But it's a testament to these guys to my left and their teammates that, once again, they never gave in. When it looked like it was over, they just didn't give in. And in the huddle, there was no hesitation. One of the most proud things I am, Troy missed that layup. I can't remember exactly how much one was on the clock. And every one of his teammates as he came to the huddle said, it's over, forget it. We're still in this. We're, we still got a chance to win. When you got a team full of guys like that that pull for each other, you got a chance. You got a chance. And uh, I couldn't be prouder of a group and happier to be coaching a group. We're looking right now for questions for the student athletes from Cincinnati. If you have a question for the Bearcats, we have two. Let's start right in the front on the left side of the aisle. Paul Doherty, Cincinnati Inquirer. Troy, would you, uh, would you describe the layup? It looked as if it was on the rim long enough that you could stare at it and watch it go through. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was wonderful. You know, Coach said, you know, Gary comes set a hard ball screen and, you know, attack the rim, get it up on the rim. And if they do close down, find your shooters in the corner. But um, when I came off the screen, you know, it was a wide open lane. And I knew I had the opportunity to at least get it up on the rim. Uh, the big man wasn't by the basket and didn't stop my path. So I just wanted to get it up on the rim. And if it did come off, that my, my teammates that attacking the glass, all four of them, you know, could have a chance to rebound it. You know, but once it was rolling around the rim, I stopped. I bent down a little bit. I looked up. And once it fell in the rim and the buzz went off, you know, I just smiled. Next question is left of the aisle, Pat. Uh, Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. Troy, I guess contrast that with the feeling when you did miss the layup. And I did see the lock or the huddle scene where people were really trying to pick you up there. Uh, can you describe that? You know, it just shows that, you know, all of, all of my teammates are in for the same thing. You know, I did miss the layup and I was down on myself because I'm not supposed to miss that layup. But all guys and even the coaching staff came to me and said, you know, it's over. We still here with you. You know, we're not going to give up on you. It's over. We're still going to win this game. We're still going to play hard. We're going to get this stop. And that was just one thing that I know that I can always count on them, that these will be my brothers for life. And that's one thing I'll never give up on them because they didn't give up on me. If you have a question for the Bearcat student athletes, please raise your hand. We're still taking questions for Troy and for Farad. There's one all the way to the right. Greg Mengel, CNHI. What about the uh, task of possibly facing Kentucky in the next round? Let's have uh, Troy answer that first, then Farad. Um, it's just, an, it's just a basketball game. You know, we're not going to go in there nervous. We're not going to go in there playing scared. Um, it's a chance that, you know, you, not everybody gets a chance to do this and we're just going to go out and leave it on the floor. Uh, Cincinnati basketball was never known to back down from anybody. And I don't think that we should back down from them. We should give them, you know, a basketball game because that's what they play basketball for. Um, you know, playing Kentucky is, is a, a blessing. It's, it's fun, you know, and that's all we want to do. We want to go out there, have fun and, and make it a basketball game. Farad, same question. Uh, yes, it's uh, just a big opportunity for us. Uh, we've been wanting something like this all year. So we're just going to go in there and uh, play together, play hard, and see what happens. A few more minutes for questions for the student athletes. If you have a question for the Bearcat student athletes, there's one on the left side toward the back. Teresa Walker, uh, Associated Press for both players. It did look grim there, though. Down seven, uh, you know, 48 seconds or so to go. What suddenly started working for you there? I think you outscored them 10 to three to get it to overtime. Troy first, and then Farad, please. Just attack the basket. Uh, we didn't need threes at those points, and the coaches did a good job of telling us to, you know, go get fouled. We're in the bonus. And also, you know, in situations like that, you don't fold. And when we practice, at the end of practice, we you know we scrimmage. We play three minute games, four minute games, and you know. One team be down two or four, and you just got to find a way to fight with your five guys and try to come back and win the game as much as possible. Farad, same question to you. Yeah, yeah like you said, we play a lot of situations in practice, and uh, 
we've been down in real games before this season too, and uh, we just always stay together. We know that it's not over until the clock says zero. And uh, so we just play hard and try to make some plays, and luckily it worked out for us. Is there a final question for the student athletes from Cincinnati? All right. We have one in the left, on the left, toward the back. In a basketball sense, or I'm Mark Story from the Lexington Herald Leader. In a basketball sense, guys, what do you think is the key to beating Kentucky? Let's have Troy take that first, then Farad. Um, I'm going to say in transition, you know, get their big mans out the paint. Uh, high ball screens, you know, ball reversals, making that big man play, get him, get him away from the basket so we can have an opportunity to attack the paint and get easy layups. Also in transition, um, they do run a lot, but they're big men, they're seven feet, they don't run all day. And that's the biggest thing is transitioning and getting a big man away from the basket. When, you know, if they're in the basket, they clog the paint and they block shots. So if you get them away from the basket and you get the ball in the rim, you have an opportunity to win. Farad, same question. I think it's a, a big task, but uh, if we take care of the ball and uh, try to force turnovers on defense and protect the glass, I think we'll be able to make something happen. We'd like to thank Troy and Farad for joining us here in the main interview room. They're going to head back toward the Cincinnati yeah, locker room, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. still open at this time. We'll now take questions for associate head coach Larry Davis. There's two toward the center. We'll start in the front. Larry, can, can you comment on the, on the game that, that Coriante played, especially after Octavius went out? I mean, he was able to stay out of foul trouble, and he, he made an, a layup in overtime underneath the basket that I'm not sure even he thought he was capable of. Could you just talk about his play tonight? Well, I, I'm going to tell you this about the layup. And you may not believe this or not, I've seen him do that this year at least 10 times in practice. That's, that's the truth. He's made that reverse layup throughout the year now. Okay, You know, again, I can't be prouder of a guy. Here's a guy that's played very limited minutes all year long. And when we need him the most, he was ready and he came through. He's had an unbelievable attitude, guys, from the start. And, you know, when he first got here, 6'9", 6'10", 270, how hard we play, the pace we play at was difficult for him. And the first month, he struggled. He really struggled. Then he began to come on, began to listen, take more coaching. He began to figure out that, it, you know, he had plenty of ability, but how hard you're going to play at all times. And again, he's kind of trained himself all year long. In, in the last month of practice, he's had unbelievable practices. It's hard to take Octavius off the floor sometimes. And again, tonight, when the bell rang for him, he was ready and he answered it. He did a great job defensively and blocked some shots and obviously made a big time layup you know, when we needed it most. How about the uh, fast break? Uh, <laughs> when he caught it on the he he blocked the shot or stole the ball on the sideline, went up the sideline and avoided the charge somehow and laid it in. That was a more amazing play to me than the, uh, than the reverse layup. I've seen the reverse layup a few times. Staying in the middle, Pat. Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. Uh, Larry, when do you anticipate talking to Mick, and what do you think the conversation will be like? I've already talked to him. <laughs> I went in the locker room, and uh, my, our guys tricked me. They got me in the, they got me in the middle and uh, doused me. They all had cups of water and ready, and they soaked me. And uh, as soon as I got done talking with them, I went in back into the coach's locker room, and, and uh, Mick had texted me. I called him right away, and he's obviously – so excited for our guys, proud of our guys. And fellas, we wouldn't be here where we're at without Coach Cronin. He built this program, and I was there along the way, and all along this year, he's been there. Okay, can't be on the court, can't be at practice, okay, much, but he's been there helping us in every scout, counseling me, helping me, supporting me, telling me, hey, you can do it, you know, telling me, trust yourself, and he not only is a, is a great young coach, he's a great friend, and, and he, he's been a big part of this and our success. And, and, you know, I know he's really proud of our guys and the effort, and uh, I'm glad we didn't let him down. Continuing with questions for Coach Davis, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We have one on the far side in the left. 
Teresa Walker, AP. First, where did Mick watch the game? He said yesterday in the locker room he wasn't sure where he'd be watching tonight. And then secondly, you coach these guys and you get them into this situation, but to see them actually come back and execute and pull it off, uh, how does that feel as, as a coach? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I think he watched it at the hotel. I'm not 100% sure because he was kind of undecided where he was, where he was going to do it. Um, you know, and that's <laughs> – I, I know he wanted to be in this arena, but he can't be. And uh, I'm surprised he didn't sneak in. Um, but to answer your question on seeing him do it, you know, Fraud and, and Troy alluded to it. These last few weeks of practice particularly, we've been doing some situation stuff at the end. We put one team up or down, so the other team has to try to come back. The other team has to try to hold the lead. And you, you practice stuff. You know, you practice stuff all the time. But to see those guys, you know, take what you – did in practice. The last play that we got Troy the ball and got him, we, we put that in about three weeks ago. Re really haven't run it before now, but we had no timeouts. And when it came down to it, we executed the play and we got Troy to, you know, free and, and got a shot. A long time ago when I coached at, at Minnesota with Coach Haskins, that's one of the things I learned from him. He always prepared his team for late clock situations when there was no time, no timeouts. And I always carried that as a coach. I've been very lucky. I've been an assistant under a lot of great coaches. And I, I've gotten something from all of them. And I learned that from him. And I'll have to call him and tell him, hey, coach, you know what I learned there and being always prepared when you don't have a timeout because we didn't have one. And, you know, they got us a shot. And uh, obviously Troy made the play, but it's it's a it's a very gratifying gratifying feeling as a coach when your guys execute things that you've worked on and the things that you've taught them throughout the year. We have another question on the right side of the aisle in the front. Uh, yeah, Tom Gresham, Cincinnati Enquirer. Uh, coach, the players were asked about playing Kentucky next. Uh, what do you think about the opportunity playing the number one team, and what would you say are are the keys to what you have to do to uh, compete with them or beat them? Well, you know, the NCAA tournament is, is, a, is a tournament that everybody wants to get into, and you work all year long to get this honor and this privilege to play because this is one of the greatest sporting events, I, in, in my estimation, there, there is, the most followed. And to get the opportunity to play, you know, a team like Kentucky who's undefeated, got a lot of – you know, people around them saying they're one of the greatest teams to play college basketball. A lot of people are saying, you know, they can play in the NBA. And, you know, I, I don't I, – I've watched them play a few times casually, and they're very, very good. And Coach Calipari is an excellent coach. But it's a great opportunity for us. It's a great opportunity for our kids. And, you know, watching them play, they got tremendous size, tremendous athleticism. It'll be a battle of, you know, can our guys keep them off the glass? And can we figure out a way to score on them? And you can't, you can't turn the ball over against them and let them get out in transition. It's going to be hard enough to stop them in half courts. You can't give them easy baskets. If we can do that, if we can keep them out of transition, and we can keep them off the backboard, then we'll have a chance. You know, they, they're a team that this year has had, had some close games. Nobody's beaten them, but some teams have played them close. And, you know, the one thing about our guys I, I know is They'll go into the game not afraid. You know, I, I do know that. Um, and they're, Kentucky's obviously a, a tremendous opponent. And, and I'm not going to sit up here and wolf and say, you know, whatever. But I, I know this, our guys, they'll be ready to play on Saturday. And they'll go out there and give it everything they got. If Kentucky's not ready to play or if we can accomplish our goals, we want to do defensively in those things and don't turn it over and get shots, who knows what can happen. Two uh, number three teams beat, or number 14 seeds beat threes today. You know, it's not like an eight or nine hasn't ever upset in one. But, uh, you know, I, I'm not focused on all the hype. I'm focused on getting back to the hotel, looking as much tape, figuring out as, as give our guys the best chance they can. I know the effort will be there from them. That's all we can do. And to hopefully put ourselves in a position that we have a chance to win. We have time for one final question all the way in the back to the right. Coach, Kent Taylor from Wave TV here in Louisville. Did you grow up, were you a Kentucky fan as a kid? You know, my father, I, I was born in Kentucky. 
And my father was a huge, huge basketball fan, loved Kentucky. I grew up, I did grow up a Kentucky fan. I grew up, I ended up moving to Indiana. So I was born in Kentucky, grew up in Indiana. I had no choice but to be a basketball coach. <laughs> My dad took me to my first high school game when I was six years old. We used to listen to Kentucky on the radio, you know. And so, you know, your whole life you grow up as a coach and you either want to coach at Kentucky or you want to beat them. I'm getting the chance. When you're a, when you're a guy from Kentucky, I should say that. When you're born in Kentucky, you know, that as a kid, that, you know, that's, uh, that's something that you think about. So I got the ladder. I'm happy. That's all I can say. Thank you very much, Coach. The Cincinnati locker room may be open for a...